welcome to All About St. Paul, where we feature videos about city services, programs, entertainment, and more. He's Nick Nelson from the city's video production team. And she's Liz Wagner from the Parks Department's Marketing and Communications Division. Coming up on this week's show. You and your toddler can be little explorers here at Como Zoo. Zubu is Halloween fun for you. No boat, no problem. You can get out on the Mississippi. School is back and so is homework. We have help. A city public works employee becomes a hero. We'll have those stories and a lot more coming up on All About St. Paul. Well, we are very excited to be coming to you today here at Como Zoo. Como Zoo began in 1897 when the city fenced in a pasture to make a home for three deer St. Paul received as a gift. In the 1930s, the Works Progress Administration funded and constructed the first major parts of Como Zoo, including the main zoo building. Today, Como Zoo is one of the most popular attractions in the state of Minnesota. Visitors can see many animal species and habitats that allow a close-up look. Zookeepers here at Como have been super busy welcoming new residents in the form of super cute zoo babies. Just this year, the zoo and its visitors have said hello to baby tamarind monkeys, a newborn reindeer, a doll sheep, and a baby giraffe that is not so small anymore. Well, along with providing the traditional zoo experience, Como Zoo also facilitates dozens of educational programs. One of those programs is Lil Explorers, and Liz is there now to find out more. I'm here with Jesse, an educator at Como Zoo and one of the presenters on Thursday mornings for Lil Explorers. Jesse, tell us a little about the program. Yeah, so Little Explorers is a free program. We offer it every Thursday from uh, September through April, except for the holiday. And it's a program where we really encourage grown-ups to bring their toddlers. And uh, we really encourage grown-up and child interaction. We have a different theme each week, and we usually have an animal visitor at our story time. And so those happen twice, um, each Thursday at 10.45 and 11.15. Talk about some of the different themes each week. So we have a different theme each week. Um, this week's theme is fun with fish. Next week's theme is going to be bird buddies. And so we have our uh, tables all set up to uh, go with the theme. So we have a lot of different activities that go with the theme. And then the story time goes with the theme as well. And usually there's an animal visitor that comes to visit at the story time. Uh, today we have a fish feeding and tropical encounters with a zookeeper. So can families just show up or do they need to register? Nope, it's free and they can just show up. That's great. Little Explorer sounds like a lot of fun. Be sure to check it out every Thursday at 10 a.m. Thanks, Liz. Well, summer is winding down here in Minnesota, but as you can see, the nice weather is still here and you need to get out and enjoy it. One of the ways we do that here in Minnesota is to get out on the water. But maybe you don't have a boat. Well, now there's an option for you, and it's right in the heart of St. Paul. Paddle Share um, is a first-of-a-kind kayak sharing program in a national park um, in the Mississippi National River and Recreation Area. The way you get a kayak is to go on paddleshare.org. You pay with a credit card, sign a waiver, and once you've done that, you will get an email or a text with a code that opens all of your equipment at the Paddleshare station in Hidden Falls. The City of St. Paul is a partner in the Paddleshare program. You know, what I love about it is that it helps um, St. Paul residents and visitors really understand the identity of the Mississippi. We get to experience it crossing over bridges and walking alongside it in incredible regional parks, but this is a great opportunity to get out on the river.
The Mississippi National River and Recreation Area is an urban national park. It was designated by Congress in 1988. There is a vision in our plan for a continuous trail and open space corridor that gets people to the river on both sides of the river. And I think this paddle share program is another example of how we are setting the pace for new kinds of recreational opp opportunities on a river. The paddle share program with the National Park Service is an incredible way to join up cities all across the national park here in the Mississippi River um, and to introduce St. Paul residents and those visiting to this incredible body of water. The St. Paul Public Library recently kicked off the school year at the Rice Street Branch. Councilmember Amy Brenmoen, who represents the area, joined library staff in welcoming students to the library and getting them excited for the upcoming school year. The library system partners with the school system to support student achievement with all the learning resources available at the library. Resources such as the library's homework centers where students can drop in and get connected with volunteer tutors. We produced this profile of the St. Paul Public Library's five homework help centers. Let's take a look. St. Paul is home to 13 libraries that offer a variety of services, including six homework centers. Each homework center is a little different than the other, but they all share a common goal. The homework center help is really focuses on uh, drop-in assistance for learners of um, uh, primarily grade and up to adulthood and we've even had an 80 year old gentleman who came for help um, to write and learn English. The first homework center was open for learning in 2001. We are fortunate to have uh, a core of very committed trained volunteers from the community um, who help in the homework centers. In addition, we are extremely fortunate to be working with some of the local colleges and universities to uh, use work-study students who come. I've been volunteering since like 1990 and I just enjoy working with the kids and you work with them one-on-one -on -one and they have these specific problems and, and you go with them and just kind of figure out what's inside their mind and, and it ends up just blossoming into something that uh, sometimes you don't expect. It's kind of a cool experience for everyone involved. Um, I've been a VISTA here for about two months, but I was a homework center tutor for um, a good portion of last year, and I really enjoyed the experience. Um, I found it really educative and very fulfilling, so I wanted to further my involvement with it. Some homework centers serve between 10 and 20 people daily, but others, like the Swamp at the Rondo Library, serves between 40 and 60 people on busy Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. Well, it's just cool that it, that it is a foundation because I come in here and I have students waiting for me sometimes. And, uh, and it's like when you see that, you know that they really appreciate the centers. And, and it's kind of a part of their routine. And it's like, you know, they get homework and whatever. And, and it's like they focus on, okay, I'm going to this place to get help and then you know, I'll get help. One of the exciting pieces to see happening in homework centers is the intergenerational support. How older learners might be helping younger ones, and how younger learners, maybe kids, are helping adults who might be um, writing a paragraph for the first time for an essay at St. Paul College. How someone with very good English but poor math skills might be helping someone with wonderful math skills but poor English. And together, learners are helping learners. And that's the whole spirit of St. Paul, I believe, is that together we pitch in, we help each other, and we all learn together. Well, it's been about 25 years since I was in school, and I've just recently signed up for college, and I have to take the assessment test. So being that it's been that long since I uh, was in school, it's been really helpful because they have practice tests that I can take here, and the people that are here are very, very amazingly helpful and we sit down with you for a long time and help you in any way possible. 
Besides the homework centers, the St. Paul Public Library offers Homework Rescue Online Tutoring, a live tutorial program where you can log on using your library card and connect to a live tutor. The homework centers play a vital role along with Homework Rescue, Read With Me, Read to Achieve, to really support and undergird the learning of the community members. I think overall, learners who come to the Homework Center discover a new level of self-sufficiency, a new ability to analyze the task at hand, and with the guidance of a volunteer or a work-study student or an, another adult to help them uh, think about ways that they can approach the problem and solve it. And so it really is the best kind of support I think the city can give our learners. Yeah, last year I was tutoring a girl who just did not get math. She's, she wasn't spatial at all, and so when she got something like a triangle or something like that, she couldn't figure it out. And then I worked with her for about five months, and all of a sudden one day she got it. And I said, you, you understand this? And, and she said, yeah, I do. And she just got taller, and, and the next time she came in, she was like totally confident. In her, so there's a few, a few like that. Oh, just thank you for having it here. I didn't know it was here and discovered it by accident. And it was almost like those beautiful little coincidences in life that happened just at the right time. <laughs> for more information about homework centers, visit sppl.org and click on Homework Help. There you will find a list of all the homework center locations, a link for homework rescue, and information about how to volunteer at a homework center near you. We're here today at St. Paul's Como Park Zoo. As we speak, the zoo is gearing up for one of the biggest events of the year. Let's go to Nick to hear all about it. Well, I know what you're wondering and we're gonna explain it all right now. I'm here with Caroline and she's gonna tell us about Como's Halloween event. Caroline, you know you can't get me near all of these fabulous costumes. And now let me try something on. I know, I, I hear ya. I come down here, sometimes I'm an arctic fox, sometimes I put on the gorilla, today I'm a giraffe. Tell us about Zubu. Well, Zubu is a family-friendly Halloween event that's geared towards kids three to eight, and they go through a trick-or-treating path, get to interact with animals, they get to do crafts, and it is a fabulous fundraiser for Como Park Zoo and Conservatory. It's really a unique alternative to, for a trick-or-treating activity for families. And it's a milestone year. This is the 30th anniversary of Zubu. Well, I know Zubu depends a lot on volunteers, and you're looking for help right now. That's true. Zubu takes at least 800 volunteers to pull off each year. We need 200 costume characters for each of the nights. Plus, we have many act, um, volunteer opportunities that you're not in costume. So if you don't like to put on a costume, which I don't understand. Um, you can do things like work in the coffee house or direct traffic or take tickets. We have something for everyone. We would love to have everybody involved. Just go to comozooconservatory.org to sign up. So once we get to the actual event, what do families need to know to come and have fun at Zubu? Well, the event is on October 21, 22, 28, and 29. So it's Saturday and Sunday evenings, 4.30 to 7.30. And the tickets are $6 in advance, $7 at the door. And you can purchase those tickets in advance at comofriends.org. Well, we've taken our kids to Zubu, and I don't know what's more fun, getting their outfits ready or seeing the awesome costumes here. You can decide for yourself, and even better, volunteer. And just to get you psyched up, let's take a look at this video we shot at a previous Zubu. It's just really exciting watching the zoo just transform into something different and then the kids and seeing their costumes and they're just, oh, they're just so happy coming through. It's, it's a lot of fun. the zoo atmosphere. It's just fun to do. I love to interact with the kids and it's just a good feeling. I have been doing Zubu for, I believe this is my 18th year. Oh wow. 
Wow. I started out as Winnie the Pooh. I've done the Blue Bear. First time coming to Zubu. He is 11 months old, so he wasn't around last year. He's Han Solo to go with the Millennium Falcon. Oh. What do you like most about the event? The different costumes that the volunteers wear. Definitely. Thank you. I came with my grandchildren. We come here every year. Love it. I just wanted to stay there all day and try on all those awesome costumes. Back to the show, Nick. Well, next up, we're going to tell you about a St. Paul Public Works employee who went into work one day to do the job of the city, and he ended up being a hero. Dennis Greeley was simply doing his job grading an alley when he saw smoke coming from the house across the street. Dennis called 911 and immediately made his way into the smoke-filled home, calling for anyone inside. Dennis found the lone occupant and pulled her to safety, almost certainly saving her life. Dennis Greeley was recently honored with a commendation from Fire Chief Tim Butler. I couldn't see anything once I opened up that door. It kind of, you know, that smoke just went from top to bottom and it was like just a thick, I mean, imagine the worst fog you could ever imagine to be in. You couldn't see from, you know, in front of your car. It was worse than that. That's all I, I don't know how else to explain it. I just started yelling for her and heard her coughing and, you know, said, yes, I'm here. It kind of came clear once I got lower. And then I saw her uh, silhouette in her whole body, and I just kind of picked her up underneath her arms, you know, and pulled her up, got her next to my body, and, and then, uh, you know, walked her out. I didn't, she didn't. She wasn't unconscious or anything, she was semi-conscious, and I just kind of was trying to talk to her, ask her if uh, anybody else was in the house, and she was coughing and stuff, and, uh, and she said, no, no, my cat. And then uh, I got her outside, and I was on the phone with 911, uh, instructing them uh, where we were, what the address was, and, and by that time, there was other people on, uh, like neighbors and everything like that. And I think Dennis uh, Greeley did an exceptional job as a new St. Paul employee in public works, but as a longtime resident of the city. He had a very vested interest in the neighborhood, a very vested interest in, in trying to help his neighbors. Uh, he did not know this woman. He was in a neighborhood working on a, a public works crew, not necessarily familiar with uh, the neighborhood or who lived there. He saw the smoke, instantly did what we want people to do. Call 911 and go and see if you can make a difference. Uh, Dennis made a big difference for this woman. As I said, uh, in all likelihood, she would have been dead within another minute or two. Uh, firefighters took about two minutes longer to get to uh, the, the scene than Dennis, uh, than Dennis did. And I'm, I'm really glad that he was there. Very proud of the, the work that the firefighters do, but I'm also very proud of Dennis Greeley and the Public Works Department today. Way to go, Dennis. You're a great city employee and a true hero. Indeed. Well, it's been a lot of fun hanging out here at Como Zoo. If we didn't already mention it, Como Park Zoo and Conservatory is open every day. For everything you need to know to plan your visit, go to comozooconservatory.org. And as usual, you can see all of the city videos online at youtube.com slash stpaulgov. See you next time.